Do you know which city has the most Starbucks in the world? Yep, it's Seoul City. If you have been to Korea, you might have noticed that there are so many cafes, maybe too many of them in Korea, especially in Seoul. I mean, why is that? Is it because Koreans love coffee? Well, that's definitely one reason. But it's also because of Korea's interesting culture centered around cafes. Today, let's talk about that. My name is Yeji Kim, and you're watching Talk To Me In Korean. To put it simply, in Korea, you go to a restaurant for food, and the real conversations begin at a cafe. Unlike in some other cultures, where people like to dine out for hours enjoying the food and the atmosphere, in Korea, food is often the main purpose of going to a restaurant. Unless you order some alcohol at dinner time or go to a bar where people usually spend hours talking and drinking. So it's quite common to finish your meal in a restaurant in just about one hour or even 30 minutes. Likewise, the owner of the restaurant also wouldn't expect you to talk hours after you finish your kimchi jjigae in 30 minutes. So as a result, going to a restaurant for a meal and then moving to a cafe has become everyone's ritual. At this point, let's learn some Korean expressions you can use when you go to a cafe after a meal. You can say to your friend, 밥다 먹었어? 카페 갈래? 밥다 먹었어? 카페 갈래? It means, did you finish your meal? You want to go to a cafe? You can also say, 밥 먹었으니까 우리 이제 카페로 옮길까? 밥 먹었으니까 우리 이제 카페로 옮길까? Which means, since we finished our meal, why don't we move to a cafe now? For those who want to test how many cafe-related Korean words they know, we made a quick quiz. Check out the description box for the link to the quiz. Let's get back on track. Why exactly cafes are the go-to places for conversations in Korea? Why not just go to someone's house or a park? Well, as we mentioned in our previous video, one reason could be many Korean young adults living with their parents. It's relatively uncommon for people to bring their friends or acquaintances to their not-so-big apartments that they share with their parents or with their grown-up siblings. Of course, it will greatly depend on the person. Some people might still enjoy hanging out with friends at home even if their parents are there. And especially those who live on their own would casually invite friends to their places whenever they want. However, in households with two or more generations living together, it seems more common to follow the trend of going to a cafe after a meal rather than having friends over. And then what about outside? Do you really have to pay to sit at a cafe every time you meet someone? Well, of course, people love to go to the park. But accessibility-wise, parks can never be cafes. There are approximately 22,000 parks in Korea and 99,000 cafes. And while cafes are found literally about every corner, to go to a park, you often need to walk quite a bit or take some form of transportation. Additionally, indoor places are generally considered to be a more pleasant and comfortable place for spending time with others. Perhaps because you don't need to worry about the hot or cold weather or the air quality. So it's no wonder that cafe culture is huge in Korea. With so many cafes, if you want some other types of things to do with your friends, in addition to just talking, there is a variety of options to choose from. From anywhere cafes where you can play with cute furry friends. to art cafes where you can create your own paintings to study cafes where you can hit the books in a quiet environment and even DIY cafes, so to speak, where you can make your own crafts. So if you're ever in Korea, why not give them a try? It's not just about the coffee, but also the unique experiences and vibrant culture you can enjoy in these cafes. That wraps up today's video. We hope you enjoyed learning about Korean cafe culture. 
And if you did, head over to our website at talktomeinkorean.com where you can join our Korean learning community of around 1.5 million users. 여러분 감사합니다. 웹사이트에서 만나요. 안녕!